Today we're talking about the best and worst tents that I've used here in the year of 2022. And we'll start with the uh, bottom of the list. My least enjoyable tent that I've used this year is the Mountain Hardware Aspect 2. The thing about this tent is it's not bad. <laughs> it really isn't. It is a great design. It will protect you in weather. It's a nice freestanding two-person tent that is gonna work in a lot of different conditions and scenarios. And to say that it is the worst tent out there is not necessarily true. It's just not the most enjoyable tent that I used for all of my backpacking that I've done this year. So the Aspect 2, like I said, freestanding tent, it has a minimal design uh, to it. And for the amount of money that you uh, invest into this tent, I think you can get something that is as equal in weight and performance and design for quite a significant price uh, decrease than what you would pay for this. Mountain Hardware Aspect 2, my least favorite of the tents that I've used this year, but still a great option if you're willing to spend the money for what they're asking for this. Next on the list is the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL1. Uh, it hits a nice middle ground for me. It's not the most enjoyable tent that I've used this year and doesn't hit the top of the list. Uh, for a few different reasons. In heavy winds and such, this thing uh, just does not perform the way that I want it to. And with the full nylon fabric to it, when I've got Dyneema tents and other things available to me that have better performance in the rain, this just sags quite a bit and it's not the best option for me personally. But in the amount of time that I've used it out in the backcountry for the trips I've had it on, I've enjoyed it. And one of the standout features of this tent that I really like is that you've got this cool like 3D uh, pocket that's at the top. And that's something that I really enjoy about Big Agnes is the fact that they care about being able to organize your gear inside of the tent. And this tent with that cool 3D pocket is uh, really nice, especially in a one person tent where you've got all of your gear uh, that you need to organize essentially. You've got a place to put things, get it off of the ground. Tiger Wall, I have enjoyed it, but again, not my absolute favorite uh, from this year. Let's jump into the next tent, and that is the Outdoor Vitals 40th One Person Tent. My experience with this is not as extensive as the others that I've got here on the table. So for me to have a really strong opinion about this is not quite developed yet. However, I want to say though that I've very much enjoyed the two trips that I have taken this uh, tent out on and the performance. It is a quick setup for a non-freestanding tent. Again, this is a one-person tent and it has plenty of room. The design aspects have a few things that I would change on here, which I'll cover in a future review of the tent after I have quite a bit more time with it. But the Fortius is new to the market. It's something that I think really hits a, a good like niche for people that want to save weight in their system and have a minimal shelter option that also isn't massively expensive like you would spend on a Dyneema shelter. And you're willing to carry a little bit extra weight than what you've got out of a Dyneema one person uh, non-freestanding tent. So, the Fortius from Outdoor Vitals and excited to keep using it, but with my time with it so far this year, they've done a good job with this and uh, would recommend it. It's performed well for uh, the times that I've been out uh, with the tent. So speaking of Dyneema, let's talk about the Z-Pax Plux Solo. This is another shelter that I got kind of later into the season. And so my time with this is not quite as extensive as other options that I've got here, but I absolutely love the way that this is performed, how easy it is to pitch, and just the general like usability of this tent compared to some other options out there. Is it my absolute favorite tent ever? No, but there are some important check boxes that this is able to uh, check off that make it really compelling for me to take when I am trying to save as much weight possible. One of those is it only uses one pole. That is a slight issue for me with the Outdoor Vitals 40th, which requires 
two poles for you to set up and it's still a one person tent. So saving weight by only carrying one pole makes this compelling. And the ability for me to save a ton of weight with the Dyneema fabric also makes this a great option. This is less than one pound without the stakes or the pole, which is super cool. Now, it doesn't come with stakes, which is not necessarily a huge deal because then you can choose what stakes you want to use with the tent. And so like consider that as a pro or a con for yourself. But I also like the livability of this tent. There's plenty of space to move around and they've just kind of taken a really minimal design and made something that is compelling and simple to use that saves a lot of weight. That is pretty much the biggest benefit to the Z-Pax Plex Solo. Next on the list is a tent that is really, really nice for just a luxury type of camp. And this is the Sea to Summit Telos TR2. I have loved this tent. No, it is not the lightest weight of all of the options. It might be the second heaviest tent that I've got here on the table, but I love the performance of this. I love the design aspects. I love that this will just handle really extreme uh, weather conditions. And I've had it in some pretty gnarly uh, wind storms down in the desert and it handled like a champ minus it's a beast to drive stakes into really loose sand. <laughs> and what I had happen with this is the wind was blowing so hard that it actually pushed the tent and pulled the stakes out and it like dumped a bunch of sand on top of me. The Telos TR2, this is a really cool freestanding tent uh, that I've very much enjoyed uh, my time with this year. We've got two more, this one and my all time favorite tent from this year, but this is the Nemo Dagger Osmo two person tent. This thing is really, really cool. This has a lot of room in it. It's also the heaviest tent that I have uh, carried and used this year. I've shared this with my brother out on a trip to Zion National Park. I've spent time in it solo. I've shared it with my daughter as we went out on some car camping trips. This thing is fantastic and the Osmo fabric is super, super cool. So for something that maximizes space with 50 inches of width at the head end and the foot end and gives you lots of vestibule space. You have that cool like sidecar. My point that I'm making is this has some really cool design aspects to it that make it uh, a very enjoyable, very livable type of shelter. And for the price that you pay for this and what you get from it, I think it is an absolute winner and would highly, highly recommend for something that you would absolutely be sharing with somebody else as well because there's a lot of space in here and splitting the weight of this between two people makes it very compelling and very uh, usable in a lot of different conditions. So I highly, highly recommend the Dagger Osmo. All right, last that we're gonna talk about is the tent that I continue to enjoy the most of anything that I have used here on the table and what I look forward to using most often. And this is the Tarp Tent Double Rainbow Lithium. Now this year I've used the uh, Sil Nylon version of the rainbow in the uh, one person version. I actually ended up selling that tent to a friend of mine so I don't have that anymore. Just trying to remove the amount of gear that I have at my disposal and share that with some other people. But the Double Rainbow Lithium is under two pounds in weight total with the poles and stakes. And it is such a comfortable, lightweight, beautifully designed shelter. This is hands down probably my favorite shelter of all time. It is so easy to set up. The design makes it very livable and kind of a palace for one person. I can really, really enjoy all of the design aspects, the weight, the ease of uh, setup, the ability to put it into a full freestanding mode by using trekking poles. Just everything about this tent 
really makes it a huge, huge win. So there you go. That is my list and experience of best and worst tents from the year of 2022. I love backpacking tents. They're so much fun and there's so many different options out there. And I'd be curious to know from you guys, what has been your favorite or least favorite uh, tent that you have used for your backpacking trips this year and see what kind of things and experiences you guys are having out there on, on the trail. Obviously, these are not the only options out there, and to say that these are the best tents out there on the market is not really fair to say. These are just the shelters that I've had at my disposal for me to be able to use and test that I've uh, purchased and such, and there's plenty of other options out there. So leave comments down in the comment section of what you've enjoyed the most, and I have a feeling a lot of you are gonna talk about the X-Mid, which, I finally am getting my hands on an XMID and will be sharing my experience with the XMID Pro here uh, in the near, near future. Catch you in the next one. See you later.